Hey, I'm Julie Blair and you're with me here today for Living in Forgiveness. And you know, every week we talk about forgiveness and the importance of it, but also just the magnitude of how it will impact or infect your life. It's up to you to choose. And as I was studying this week about all the areas of forgiveness, the one area that I really started seeing that was very evident in my life was double-mindedness. And that's one massive area of the lives of believers that they don't even recognize how they want to live one way, but yet are not. And so this series that I am starting today probably will be not just this segment that we are together, but also probably next week and the week after because there is so much content that we really need to get. So the title of this is The Sin of Double-Mindedness Through Unforgiveness. It's a big one, but what I'm going to share with you will change your life. So I hope that you're ready. Now, when I look at double-mindedness, I started looking for definitions of what exactly it means. And so in my own definition, I have it as a person who lives in a mental state of compromise. Hypocrite, wishy-washy, those three things, mental compromise. Now, if you're double, you have two of something. Now, minded is inclined to think a certain way. So when I couple this, then I start doing a little bit more digging because I like all the research and I start looking for synonyms. Here are just a few that I found so that way I can set the stage for you about where our minds are. Ambivalent, changeable, undependable, inconsistent, unresolved, unreliable, or uncertain. So when we really look at this, double-mindedness keeps us all living in sin. There are many things that un unforgiveness does to us, and also the double-mindedness will keep us from. I'm going to be going through 10 ways that double-mindedness through unforgiveness is sin, but then I'm also going to provide you with solutions and outcomes of those solutions. How amazing is it that God has brought this to us today? So when I look at double-mindedness, it's kind of like if you take your brain, and you know we have the right, or you left brain or right brain, all these different things, but we'll say, okay, so a person who's double-minded has one set of thoughts here and another set of thoughts here, and they're trying to operate, but yet they can't function fully together 100%. That's where we are at today. That's where the church is. Say this, do this. Do as I say, not as I do, right? And then we have people perishing for lack of knowledge and we wonder why our country is in the shambles that it's in. Or maybe the country that you live in, whether it's in Israel or Japan or the Ukraine or wherever you're living, you see the shambles around you. We've got to get our minds aligned with the Word of God. You see, when I look at those that are double-minded, what are some things that come to mind? Well, I'm a believer, yet there's no evidence of it. That was me. Oh, I'm a believer. Yeah, I sit in church on Sundays, but Friday I'm at the bar. And then I could justify that because, well, I never, I'm not a drunk and I don't go home and sleep around. I'm never at a one-night stand. I could do this. I could do that. But I go to church, so that way I could justify. I say this, but yet I do this. Conflict. It's compromising choices. I know what I should do, but I don't. And I know what I shouldn't do, but I do do. Much like what Paul talked about. Double-minded. Is that where you're at today? We can see it all through the holiday season. Oh, I really shouldn't spend this much money, but you know what? Let me just pull out the plastic and buy it anyway, double-minded. I shouldn't eat all this food, but I'm going to give in to gluttony anyway. I should exercise so that way I'm treating my body as a temple. That's a big one for me. Let's just face it. Who likes to get sweaty? But it's something we have to do, right? It, it, you can't not do the things that you know you need to do. I should read the Word, but I'm going to play 
games and get thumb exercises instead. We try to be led by the Spirit, but yet give in to all the sinful nature, which would make sense because look what's around you. What are you surrounded by? And that was, that was me for a really long time where I never really thought about what surrounded me in terms of people, in terms of my surroundings, in terms of what I was listening to. What surrounds you? You see, if you are living in a constant state of influx, your mind will not remain focused on one item or one direction for very long. Why? Because how could it? If, all, if you're trying to go here, but only half of your mind is going here, the other half will just get pinged at any given time and taken off track. How can you live a lifestyle of forgiveness being double-minded? You see, you can't. And I know that from personal experience. It is either all or nothing. You cannot partially forgive or be partially pregnant. You just can't. Straddle a wooden fence, you'll get splinters. Now, you know, the other evidence of double-mindedness is that old habits and lifestyles are still evident. It's kind of where you're trying to grow into the big girl britches and you pull them up and you're trying to get them up so that way you can walk, but yet they don't really, they don't really fit. It's not who you are. So in process, you're not who you have become, but you're not who you are, and so you live in a life of influx. Unforgiveness eats you alive. The choices that you make are a result of that unforgiveness. You try to be nice, but you're not, because how could you? You try on this side, but yet what's living over here is the opposite. Double-mindedness is a sin. Double-mindedness keeps people trapped. Double-mindedness keeps people deceived. Wakey, wakey. This is where we are today. The old habits still influencing your new walk. And I see it all the time. I see people dressed in their club gear because they're going to go to the club after they go to church saying, well, I'm going to repent first so that way I'm free to sin afterwards. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? They don't do that in New York. Nah. It's only here in Dallas, right? So when we look at that, what is that about? It's a reflection of where each one of us are and the changes that need to be made. So I ask you today, what changes are you going to make? Are you going to allow your double-mindedness through unforgiveness and unforgiveness keep you double-minded? I will tell you the outcomes of that, and they're not ones that you want to keep. So when I get into 1 Peter 4.7, to the right of the Bible here, 1 Peter 4.7, the end of all things is near. Okay. Be on watch for that, right? Therefore, be clear-minded. Right there. Be clear-minded, not double-minded, clear-minded. If you are clear-minded, you probably have one mind, one focus. You're clear in your mind and self-controlled. See, if you are battling double-mindedness, there's probably not a lot of self-control because one mind is controlling this, or one part of your mind is this, and the other one is this, which is a battle internally. And I'm gonna talk more about that in just a few minutes. There is no clarity when you have two at odds. A house divided cannot stand. And you know what? I'm gonna have to write that down because that also just ties right into this, a house divided cannot stand. You need to write that down. Divided can't stand. And how is your household holding up? Not just you and your wife or your kids, but you in this household. How are you standing up? It continues on. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Guess what unforgiveness does? Unforgiveness keeps all those sins right out in the open. There is no love when you're unforgiving. How could there be? Because you only focus on yourself and what other people have done to you. That's not love. No, no, no. That's everything but. But then I continue on. 
Mm. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Well, another symptom of unforgiveness is grum grumbling and complaining and all these things. But if we go back to the double-mindedness, you want peace, but yet you're going to be mad about it. When you're mad about it, there's no peace. Do, 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 do. We go back to the wishy-washy, the compromising in the mind. Each one should use whatever gift he has to serve others. Well, guess what? You want to serve, but you just can't quite get there because you're double-minded. Unforgiveness keeps you double-minded because there is no peace. There is no directional going forward because how could there be? Because you play victim. You can't be a victim and a victor at the same time and expect grand results. You can try, but it's going to show and reveal itself. It always does. Now, then it says faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Well, there's no grace when there's unforgiveness. I can tell you that. Do you want to go down that path? We will in just a bit. If anyone speaks, he should do it as if someone's speaking the very words of God. Now, right there, we could just stop. Right there. Looking at that, double-minded people want to speak the word of God, and they may do so at some point. However... Their enmity with themselves. And that was me. I wanted to spend more time in the Word. I just didn't know how to get there. I wanted to do this, but I didn't. It was like having good intentions. Good intentions don't mean good results because you didn't do anything. You know, when I teach my college students, I tell them zero completion equals failure. Well, I showed up. Showing up now means you're ready to do something. How many of you drive to a mall and sit in the parking lot? Why would you do that? Think about that. If you're going to go Christmas shopping or holiday shopping or whatever holiday, July shopping, school shopping, whatever you're, do you just get in your car, drive to the store, and then never get out of the car? Of course not. You do something. And this is where we have to get to doing something to deal with ourselves to move on to what he has for us. Now, as I continue on, if anyone serves, he should do it with all the strength God provides. Now, check this out. I want to read this again because I'm going to take you somewhere. When we look at this, if anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides. Now, if you're double-minded, God's going to provide you all the strength. You're following me there. God's going to give you 100% of him because he's God and that's what he does. However, you are only operating at 50% because the other part of you is like not really there because it's an enmity with itself. So guess what? God just gave you 100% and you're only going to be able to use half of that 100% because the other half of you, you've made the choice to be double-minded. Does that make sense to you? Right there, it says, if anyone serves, he should do so with all the strength that God provides. He's provided you with everything, everything. But your double-mindedness will keep you from living, operating, and receiving all of what he has for you. And that is one of the biggest sins that goes untalked about because it keeps us separated from God and we don't even know it. And how can you talk about what you don't even know was an issue? I knew for so long that there was an issue. I knew, I knew, but I couldn't quite, I thought I had a mental disability. I thought that there was something wrong with me. For so many years, I was so trapped and I knew there was this gap. It was like being retarded and knowing you're retarded and can't figure it out or whatever PC word, mentally impaired, whatever PC terminology people use today, I thought I was retarded. I'll just give it to you straight. Until I started seeing, wow, this is what it is. I'm not making the choices that I need to be because my double-mindedness is impacting me and I'm not able to serve as I should be because God's provided me with everything, but my double-mindedness is keeping me from receiving, operating, and living in it. Unforgiveness. It's what does it. Unforgiveness of self. Unforgiveness of others. I even had to forgive God and Jesus. Yeah. Lots of stuff. And I thought that I had, because you see, that's what double-mindedness tells us. 
when you're living double-minded, you are the best thing in the world. Because your mind's not going to tell you otherwise. I mean, mine didn't. That's why I've said before, find the people, get around people who have that gift of discernment. The, the prophets, apostles, the people that, that have the giftings that you may not. So that way you can receive a good word that will help you be in position to change. Find the people with that discernment that have been there. It's hard to get somewhere from people or have people lead you where they have not been. The blind leading the blind, right? But who's more blind? We've got to get this. As it continues on, so that in all things God may be praised. So the whole thing comes back to God being praised. But if we're not able to receive what he has for us and we're not able to walk in it, then how exactly are we going to be able to then give him praise? Because this part of us is going to be mad because we didn't get what we think we should have got even though we didn't really were in rightful position to receive it anyway. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Now, I gave you a lot of stuff right in that scripture. That's 1 Peter 4 through 7. Now, you see when we look at where we're at, there's probably things in your life that may be deep, dark, hidden secrets that you've not shared with anyone. But you know what? I know that if you do, they will set you free. That it's a burden that has been weighing on you for that fear of judgment, for that fear of going down that path of having to forgive someone for those pains many years ago. You who were raped as a child, who are now in your, your later years, forgive. I call out to you, forgive. Make today be the day that your heart is free. Don't go another day not receiving all of what you should because unforgiveness reigns. You know, it's like somebody did something to you, but yet you drink the poison and suffer the consequences. While they didn't drink it, and are living free. It is time to say, you know what, I'm going to lay this down. I want to be who God created me to be, but that's going to require recognizing where you're at and getting real and saying, yeah, I've been tripped up. Need to renew my mind. Yeah, what's that mean, right? We talk about renewing the mind also. I, oh, just renew your mind, renew your mind. Da, 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 da. Don't conform to the patterns of the world. Make your own patterns. What does that mean? Oh, I don't know, right? A lot of people say that. But it's your choice today to say, you know what? I have been double-minded. I know I need to read my Bible, but I just haven't because I like football too much. I know that I should do this. We can know all kinds of things, but knowing doesn't mean doing. And the word doesn't say be a, be a hearer, be a, be a listener of the word, be a, be a anything. It says be a doer, doer. What are you doing about you? That's a great question, right? What are you doing about you? You are accountable, just like me. And I was so sick and tired of myself. And when you get to a point of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, then you'll do something about it. And that's what I was. I couldn't quite figure out what was wrong with me until somebody spoke to me about being double-minded. And I saw it. I saw how I had left Egypt, but Egypt never left me. I saw all these things but couldn't quite figure it out. It was very much like living in a land of hypocrisy. And no wonder why so many people call Christians hypocrites. Really? Should it be a shock? And is that you today? Do I dare call you out? Say, are you really living the life that you should be? You know, when we look at, I'm going to go to Psalm 119.13. Psalm 119, 113, and here's what it tells us. I hate double-minded men, but I love your law. You are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commands of my God. Mm. 
Go back up here. I hate double-minded men. You know why? Because they're unreliable. They're inconsistent. They're wishy-washy. They're hypocrites. They're unstable in all that they do. No wonder. It's kind of hard to know which side of the person you're going to get on any given day. And that was me. And I didn't know which part of me was going to wake up. This part or that part. You, know, you can't put old wine or new wine in old wineskins. But yet that's where we're living, and you know what? It doesn't work, and we can see that. The lack of power in the church, the lack of people and Christians, the lack of understanding of power and authority in Jesus Christ that every single one of us have, but we don't recognize and do anything about, and then we blame God. Oh, why is this happening to me? Really? Maybe it's you that's happening to you because your double-mindedness is keeping you trapped. Maybe. Maybe. 